What is up you guys, and of course, welcome to another Wi-Fi battle with your truly, The Scavenger. And yeah, today we're going up against the man himself, Hayden. Big fan of this guy, and very happy to battle him again. Actually, I haven't been able to do so, mainly because all the Moon has been out, you know, and having a kid and whatnot. You know, you know exactly the drill, simply haven't had enough time to do what I really want to do, which is battle people that I generally enjoy to watch. And Hayden is definitely one of those guys. Probably one of those that I would say is the most, the much easier guy to go with. Definitely have a very strong and very fair mentality to wife a battle, which is why it's so great to both watch him and you know talk to him. I think he's a great guy overall. Uh, so that said, I wanted to bring a team that I think wasn't too meta heavy. I really just wanted to showcase a few ideas that I had and see how it managed. So, looking upon my opponent's team here, we see Steelix, Saucepuck, Medicham, Blastoise, Vicavolt, and Breviary. Uh, primarily a rocker, I would say, passive team with two really strong attackers, Saucepuck and Medicham being such. Vicavolt can be very strong depending on the set, and Breviary can be either bulky or scarfed. If it's a scarf variant, I do believe it does fairly well towards my team. So, that's something I need to watch out for. Uh, I myself here is using a rather, I would say, niche team, but I think the idea here is really interesting, and that's why I really want to showcase it. So the Pokemon I'm using is a Scarf variant of Twinamaro, fairly standard, I would say. Focus as my card with Shell Smash. Um, it's a very good late game sweeper, though I need to keep off the rocks off the field, which is why Clay Duel is very important for this matchup, mainly because he can set up rocks himself, but also Rapid Spin. And versus Steelix, that's going to be very important, though. I need to watch out for a source pack who, of course, can set up versus this, and that's something I kind of wanted to avoid. Um, and then we'll have Earth Power again with Ice Beam to kind of have a fair coverage. Um, it was a Crabominal, huh, kind of forgot the name already. Assault Vest variant, um, pretty standard. Um, I just really want to use that Pokemon outside of Trick Room, I want to see how it fares. So it has Strain Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Earthquake. So, yeah, I wouldn't say it's too cool. Uh, Wheel of Death Assault Vest variant with counter um basically hard to kill can be useful not necessarily versus this team i feel it's kind of redundant however decidui can be extremely important for this matchup if anything because lately i've been using a decidui set which is heavily based on countermeasuring the meta in you right now so on the latter it has been we don't want to fight him see and low sweep and that's something that fs watson is able to kill incinera after intimidate kill a Sil valley and kill steelix with little no issue though and coach sorry the all out pummeling is roughly 150 base power stuff like that but it is enough to ko and the cgi is very successful in doing so and definitely have been able to carve itself a rather strong niche however versus a person that uses sets that can be unconventional it can just be not as successful it's one thing to do to prep for the the common stuff and one thing to prep against somebody who aren't using common stuff so with that in mind or really just one test this water against a player like hayden which really can throw me off so with that said let's go into the match and because i decided to lead off with my toga tomorrow i don't know necessarily what i was preparing for but yeah, I, I clearly can't do anything here. I don't have reversal, I don't have anything to counter measure Steelix. Shortly said, this is a Pokemon that will be very successful at staying in. Uh, so my opponent here is actually gonna lead, go for the Stealth Rocks, which is fine, since as I said before, Claydol kinda covered that role, so making of course Stealth Rocks go off the field. My intent is to of course do such. So go for Rapid Spin, get Rocks away. Um, I'm half expecting her either Heavy Slam or Toxic. We will see the Toxic, and that's <clears throat> that's fine. Um, definitely puts me on a timer, and Claydol is um, potentially losing this matchup, depending on what's going on. That's it, though. I mean, if he's going to stay in, that's going to be a possible issue, but I'm just going to go straight after her power. I do kind of want to push it out of the sturdy range, since I haven't got rocks off myself, of course. Uh, but yeah, we go for her power, as you guys can see. That's a very thick last always that's really we really aren't doing much damage there now are we however i do have a fair switch in towards this and that is my wiggle tough the salt wedge should keep me from, you know kind of bulky versus this the only thing i need to watch out for is either if this is a c celebration set or if it has toxic and i kind of was leveling myself between the two i decided to do go for the easy thing and go for the hyper voice but we do see the toxic so it's not a celebration set this is not a c move set or anything like that this is just a very, very, very thick 
Blastoise by Hypervoice does a lot of damage, but we're definitely not in range of possibly winning this matchup. So I need to blow myself whether or not I want to stay in or not, but I decided to go to the Sidui since uh, if he only has Scald and Ice Beam and Ice Beam doesn't do too much damage, I should be able to set up a Soul Stance here. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately though, he goes for a Scald, I am lucky that I don't get burned, but I am in a situation where I can freely go for a setup and then from there try to you know, gain some kind of momentum. He goes in actually for the uh, Soul Spark, which I wasn't too scared of. Um, he can't do anything super effective towards me. So all the friend and me would actually run sword stance. I go directly for that low sweep, and that's going to be a guarantee KO. Uh, and, if, and if he survives that after the minus speed that he will get for the low sweep, he wouldn't have been able to outspeed me. So all in all, I think that was a kind of kind of cool play. Definitely got a massive momentum out of that. Uh, now Medisham here is most certainly scarfed, but I do practice shadow sneak, as you guys can see. We do pick up the nipple knee with well, little to no issue actually. So really, really happy about that. Then Braviary comes in. So fearing that this actually is a scarf Braviary, I'm not going to risk that with my Decidui and switch in actually wheel it up just to get the recall going on. Um, he goes for Braver, which is lucky for me as uh, it does do what is that like 80 percent or 80 damage in recall for him, and it doesn't do anything in all his HP bars. So this is definitely a bulkier version of Braviary. So I'm actually went for Hyper Voice here in case he went for a substitute, just to kind of punish him, since I had Togunamaru who can easily kind of punish him afterwards. But yeah, we know now that this is bulky, so we know the CGI will be able to have speed in the next time we do have a matchup. So I'm going to switch him on Arshanek and I'm going to do the best as I can just to kind of force him out. As Birda comes in, I do luckily predict this right and go for U-turns and get some kind of momentum out of this. And um, <clears throat> My initial thought is basically to go back to Clay Duel, forcing him not to get off Stellar Frogs, because I do, in the end of the day, I do want my Mag Mortar to be somewhat successful here. Uh, I don't want to push it in an area where he can't do anything, and uh, this is my best way of doing so, as my opponent goes to Shell Shock. And uh, the fat ass Blastoise, <laughs> like I said yet again, so I, mean, I really can't do anything towards. I do understand why this Pokemon is ranked as a very, very high. Um, and you Pokemon in uh, and you clearly because I can barely touch this it, besides the situation I really are in a tough spot versus Blastoise so with that in mind I will try to ensure that I'm to self rocks up and actually sack off my clay door I feel I can wiggle myself around this Pokemon potentially and if I fall while well, he goes for an Ice Beam or Skull that's going to be massive for me now he goes for Ice Beam, that knocks me out, that guarantees I have self rocks on the field. It also guarantees that I can actually try to knock this Pokemon out. My best way of doing so is actually bringing the Sidurai who can't be spinned on, and all the thing he can do to me is I go for Ice Beam or go for the Skull, well, whichever suits me, to be honest. So I get that Swole Stance going, and yeah, he goes for the Ice Beam. And as you guys will see, while it does damage, it doesn't do a whole lot, and I can easily knock out this Blastoise now. I can easily actually knock out the majority of his remaining Pokemon, and that's kind of cool. I won't deny that, I feel the Sidroy is working very very well towards the scene. Now as I said before, we already know now this Braviary is a obscure variant, so we know I will be able to outspeed that, and I'm just gonna go for that C all out pummeling, just to showcase what this set really was all about, and just get that thumbnail and <laughs> I was gonna say it's thumbnail design, we'll see what I do. But yeah, quite frankly, Decidua is a Pokemon that does very well here. And uh, we were able to knock out the Braviary with little no issue. However, he still has Becca Vault and his Steelix left. And while I can deal with the Steelix, I really can't kill the Becca Vault. I can't go for a Shadow Sneak, I'm, I'm sure to do around 50%, but I will definitely fall versus this Pokemon, as you guys can see. That's what I do with this is a Specs Becca Vault, and that's a very scary thing to be dealing with. However, at this point I am in a situation that I have my Sash attack, we don't have any rocks, I can easily go for a Shell Smash and then wrap up the game from there. And uh, <clears throat> I'll be honest here, I don't necessarily want to showcase games where um, I feel my opponent aren't able to build momentum because uh, of one Pokemon. I think the CGI representing that in this Wipeout Battle, this was a Pokemon that 
I think Salzburg was the way for him of checking that, but uh, he didn't suspect it to have low sweep, and I do believe that attack is still kind of rare to be seen. So I think he played right, but face against something that is getting more popular as we speak. And um, I think he lost a very, very big momentum as a way to shaky my team due to that, because defensively he was definitely on par, if not even stronger than me. But the city I just really ripped apart holes in the team very early. I'll be honest though, I didn't mean to this game to be so one-sided. I do believe the CGI on its own really did a massive amount of damage towards this team. And I don't believe my under 5 really was on par with what I was bringing. And that was with that. I think it made the game more challenging, but the CGI really just... It really just suited the situation a lot better than the others, and that's why it came in so often. Um, Though I have to say this, had the Braver been Scott, it would have been a Pokemon that could <clears throat> very well actually have been knocking me out. It, that my Crabominal, nor my, my Cargo, or the Sidroid would have been able to deal with that. So it would come down to my Togedemaru, who most certainly couldn't deal with Sixty Licks. So it's just one of those things, like one item switch and you know we have a lot of... Uh, uh, actually a, a lot different game that we're actually ending up with. So I, I'll definitely say that to you guys, to kind of see the situation so how I saw it. So Hayden's team here wasn't necessarily bad, he just had the wrong set for the matchup itself and that really came together when like I said their source pack wasn't a response to the city right? I think once source pack fall it really the city right? just started to poke holes at the team that it wasn't supposed to. Had the Vicar Vault would have been an initial switch it would have been a lot more and a lot it would have been a lot tougher for me to deal with that head on. And I think he he missed that opportunity to force me out of that offensive momentum. That said, I did enjoy this game very much and I think Hayden played really, really nicely Consider that he was facing something he wasn't expected to be forced to deal with. So, massive, massive props to that. Uh, and for everybody who's been watching, I hope you, of course, enjoy this game. And to Hayden himself, if you're watching this, thank you for battling me. It was a genuine pleasure and definitely a lot of fun battling bigger YouTubers and like I said Hayden is some, a person that I definitely would see as one of the better people if not the best in the Pokemon community he just had like I said this very very easy going great mentality which I think is such a rare sight these days so I'm definitely hoping Hayden keeps growing and become the YouTuber he deserves to be because he's definitely one of the greatest it's simple as that uh, so for everyone who's watching like I said thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video until then take care bye